In this exciting video, I'm going to talk about how to use Obsidian as a second brain. I'm a doctor and YouTuber, I do code sometimes, but I needed one place to have all of the stuff that I learned, which is from so many different sources, and just chuck that into one software. So Obsidian was the software that I ended up choosing, and I want to guide you through about one and a half years of me using this software to show you how you can use it too. So here's my graph of notes in Obsidian. It's literally thousands of notes that I've collected over the last one and a half years. This idea of linking concepts together is really, really powerful. And so that's what sort of makes it a bit different from, for example, Apple Notes or whatever Microsoft Word documents you might have seen in a folder. You can actually use that to draw new ideas and synthesize new findings out of the stuff that you've made. So I chose Obsidian for a few reasons. The first is that it has what I deem perfect capture. In the most ideal world for a second brain type app where you're capturing knowledge, you want that capture to be as efficient as possible. For example, I might have just talked to someone about something and then I just want to quickly note it down on my phone. But other reasons why you would choose Obsidian is that it does not rely on you needing to know the structure of your information in advance. You can create pages on the go by using what's called a link. I find that Obsidian has the best searchability out of any app, hands down. The problem with Notion sometimes is that it can be a little bit slow on the searchability side, especially if you're trying to search individual text. If you're using something like Apple Notes, you don't have enough power to be able to find the thing that you're looking for because basically you can type in a few keywords, but that's about it. So with Obsidian, you can actually use things like tags to narrow your search down, and you can even use crazy stuff like regex if you know a bit of programming to be able to really search things like statistics, for example. The other cool things about Obsidian is that it's offline, and so it's actually really, really fast because it's searching the files on your computer. These files are literally located on your computer in a folder, so you never get locked into Obsidian specifically. You can just take these files and then put them into another software if you wanted to. And last, but perhaps most importantly for other people, Obsidian is completely free, <laughs> so you don't have to pay a subscription or anything like that, and that's really kind of crazy, actually. <laughs> Now, I'm going to talk about how to take smart notes in Obsidian. So first of all, I want to talk quickly about the Zettelkasten. The Zettelkasten is probably the smartest way to take notes. In a traditional Zettelkasten, you have three types of notes. You have a fleeting note, you have a literature note, and then you have a permanent note. And what these notes represent is increasing levels of distillation. For a fleeting note, it's kind of like the scratch pad of this whole note system. So. My fleeting note is actually my daily note. So what I do is I actually put in any raw thought into this particular note. And for me, that might be about medicine. It might be code that I want to remember. It might be ways to use Final Cut Pro or it might be stuff about YouTube. For you, it's going to be whatever matters to your life. Maybe it's like people that you meet. Maybe it's conversations that you've had. You can literally put anything into this daily note. And the reason that you would use Obsidian as opposed to other pieces of software is because you can start to create the structure without having thought about the structure before. Beforehand. So the way that you do that is you create links. Links are essentially separate pages and the idea behind links is that you can actually grab the atomic bits from other pages and then reference it in other pages that you create. So for example, let's say that I create this as a link talking about the 37% rule. The 37% rule is a rule in dating where if you have 37% of your love life, if you choose someone that's better than the first 37% of people that you've dated, then that's like the optimal person to date. <laughs> it's, 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 I didn't, I'm not making this up, this is actually from a book. But obviously the concept is not something that just applies to the dating world, right? It applies to any situation where you've got a number of samples, but you don't know what the quality of the samples are. So it's like, how do I decide what's the best place to stop at? And this is actually an optimal stopping technique. So if I use a link, I can look at the 37% rule and then see all the times that the 37% rule was mentioned via the backlinks panel and then that tells you like oh like this concept connects to all these different places that's really really powerful if you need to explain something and you want to explain actual examples of it so back to our daily note and I tend to use tags a lot and the reason for using tags is that they really really help with searchability because you can use the tags to actually narrow down your search for example if I wanted to search about YouTube storytelling I can put that as a tag and then I want to search for stuff about YouTube storytelling that Patty Galloway has said. So I just type in Patty Galloway and then all the times with that tag that I put in and also that keyword name will come up there really, really nicely. 
I can use another pane to very, very quickly flick through these different results and then add them to a separate document. And this concept of grabbing information from a document and putting it into a more distilled form leads me to the next topic of the literature note. So the concept of a literature note, well, when you're reading a book or an article or listening to a podcast, most people that don't have a second brain or don't use a digital format, they will just listen to it and be like, ah, like, yeah, okay, I'll remember it. But unfortunately, the way that human memory works in particular is that we actually forget stuff really, really, really quickly. We sometimes place an over-reliance on our memory to do the hard work, but then when someone asks us something, I'm like, oh, I remember one time six months ago that something like this got mentioned. You don't really have an ability to retrieve that unless you Google it and search it and basically re-research it, which is not the ideal thing. What you'd prefer prefer to do is like have thought about it once, have the idea put in somewhere and then be able to retrieve that idea at any time. So I use my literature note in a few ways. Most recently, I've been using my Kindle to read a lot of books and then I'll highlight information on the Kindle. I connect it to a service called Readwise and then from Readwise, it automatically syncs into Obsidian. So whatever I highlight inside my Kindle book as I'm reading it will go into my notes and that's really crazy. I'll put a link for Readwise below because that's a pretty cool piece of software. I might take Take notes personally from a podcast for example and so like Mr Beast did a podcast on the Joe Rogan podcast and I just literally transcribed the whole thing into a literature note and you can see all the information here is stuff that I've written down in terms of the lesson I learned it was a really long note because it's literally like one and a half hours of like talking but there is a problem with the literature note. It big. In the last part of the Zettelkasten, you have what's called a permanent note. Now, a permanent note is the most distilled part of your ideas. In my own distilled notes, what I do is I take the things that I've created as concepts, as links in the literature note and put those into the distilled note. So for example, this is the Mr. Beast distilled note. And it's this concept where I want to have a high level overview of the stuff that I learned, but I don't want to go down into the nitty gritty of it because you can only store so much information in your brain. When you have this high level mental model, that's the one that you use to actually link it to other areas. So for example, if I was to think about medicine, maybe there's ways that Mr. Beast and what he says can apply to healthcare promotion. And so those ideas can link together and that's really, really cool. So Obsidian is like a super duper good piece of software. If you wanna go much, much, much deeper, I've actually created a one and a half to two hour course on Obsidian and I'll be including that in a link in the description as well. So consider the course if you need this sort of stuff for your career because it's probably the most detailed one on Obsidian ever, <laughs> as far as I know. I have so much more that I want to talk about Obsidian. I mean, I've literally been using it for one and a half years with thousands of notes. Otherwise, if you like stuff about productivity and tech, feel free to subscribe and I'll catch you in the next video. This has been Davido, Davido out. <laughs>